year, but as you can see, he's a right-hander. Likes to have a uh, likes to use a split-fingered fastball, which should be interesting. He's been in 14 games, 1 and 0, 2.29 run average, four saves. He's pitched 35 and a third innings, giving up 31 hits, 10 runs, nine of them earned. Based on balls 12, strikeouts 29. We mentioned about Gilbert having a bad baseball uh, ball uh, strikeout ratio, and he caught him that time for his one batter. Well, that's why, of course, a, a manager or a head coach will make a change quicker. He has seen his pitcher so many times that he knows what that means. And so he will pull a pitcher out a lot quicker than someone who's seeing the team for the first time might. Scott Bryant, the man at the plate for the University of Texas, is exactly the man they want there. Cliff Gustafson now has pulled Lance Jones and John Brayther over to the third base coach's box to give them instructions on what exactly he wants in terms of base running under certain situations. Bill Buffet talking to David Lowry over at first base. The count will be 2-0 and on Scott Bryant when Hughes is ready to deliver. Again, one out, top of the fourth. A&M with a 7-3 lead. There's ball three. Off-speed pitch that missed. There's no place to put him. No, we don't determine whose hitter this is until we find out what he did. Because in the first two balls, if he walks, which he did, and that actually a wild pitch, but only one run will score anyway. Will score anyway, that's right. That walk now, because the two balls, no strikes, actually goes to Gilbert. Goes to Gilbert. All right. Scott Bryant picks up one of his easier run batted in on the year. Number 76. So Lance Jones moves over to third, David Lowry will be at second, and Scott Bryant will go to first on a base on balls. That will bring Arthur Butcher to the plate, batting 317 on the year. Butcher has a double. He's one for two this game, and he has a run batted in. He's got that, that quick stroke. I just really like the way he gets that head of the bat out in front of the ball with quick wrists. Had a grand slam home run last week. Inside, and the AM pitchers have simply not found the plate in this inning. They have, a, they have thrown very, very few strikes. There's still only one out. The bases are still loaded. He said Butcher had a grand slam home run against Texas Tech last Saturday. That's again inside. Ball two. You can have all the stuff in the world. If you can't throw strikes, you're going to lose some games. Uh, the Aggie pitchers have walked four and hit three. And this inning, the Aggie pitchers have thrown 11 pitches, 10 of them balls. Inside, make that 11 out of 12. So you can get back in the game real fast or run at a time if you keep the bases loaded. Four straight pitches, and another run comes in. Well, Texas has had two runs walk in on eight straight pitches. And that's their third run of the inning. And now it is seven to five. And it's low and away, no doubt about it. We have reached the point now where forget the seven runs in the first. It's a, it's a game. It's the same as a two to nothing game. Actually, it's a two to nothing game with the team trailing threatening heavily. Eddie Toledo at the plate, and there's the first strike from Steve Hughes. Toledo has been hit by a pitch twice today. So this, he has yet to have an official at bat. Well, he is a big target. 6-3. That ball is popped up. Let's see if they're going to call the end. That's into shallow left field. Left fielder makes the catch. They bluff. And two men are down. Throw was way off line, but of course, Cliff Gustafson had no way of knowing that. He had David Lowry at third. He still doesn't want to run himself out of the inning with a double play on a fly out throw out. David Tollison will now be the ninth man to come to the plate for the University of Texas here in the fourth inning. Tollison 
Batting 308 has struck out and hit into a fielder's choice as two first times up. Texas now down by two. Bases still loaded. Strike. Well, once Hughes found the plate, he's been right there. He throws the split finger fastball. Right now he's just trying to throw the strike ball. But you got to watch for the split finger once he gets ahead on the count. That ball is in the dirt. That might have been the split finger. That's right. One and one. Seven to five. Two out. Top of the fourth. There's Scott Bryant. Arthur Butcher. Slow pitch. Misses. Two and one. Tollison has started at five different positions for Texas. All three outfield spots. That ball misses as well. So once again, the Texas batter gets way ahead. This time the count is three and one. Texas has three runs, three hits, and three walks in this inning so far. And there are three men on base. Strike. Tollison tried to help the umpire that time, but no way. We're in a situation here, though, Steve, an extra base hit, and we have a new leader in the ballgame because it's 3-2 with two outs, and they're all running. Crowd gets on its feet. Cheering on Steve Hughes. They're clapping. Here we go. That ball is into deep left field. That wind, it's gone. Grand slam, home run. How about that? Well, they were off and running. They didn't have to run very fast. As Tomlinson hits his fifth home run of the year, four runs batted in. It is 9-7, a seven-run inning for Texas. And the second Grand Slam home run for the Longhorns in two games here at College Station. He got every bit of that. He got the pitch he was looking for in a full count. The wind did help it a little bit as it went out about, though, 360 in left field. But let's watch the swing. Low. It was low in the strike zone, but he knew he hit it. It was going to give a lot of trouble to Newman, and it gave him the maximum amount of trouble. Well, that'll bring up the 10th batter, Craig Newkirk, starting this inning again, as now both teams have batted around in an inning. Newkirk started this off. Whoa, with an out. Inside pitch. That brings the count to... One and one. Two out. Texas suddenly takes the lead. 9-7. Very frustrated Steve Hughes. That ball is deep to left field as well. A little bit higher. Back, back, back. But it's still gone. Back to back home runs. Craig Newkirk, who had the Grand Slam last night, gets his second home run of the series. And Texas continues to rattle the boards. This has been an eight-run inning. After the Yankees had a seven-run first, it does not make Steve Hughes all that happy. That, uh, that pitch should have been a fly ball. That was not hit that hard. That one really was affected by the win. The home run by Tollison at least was hit much more solidly. This one he just got under it. Just got under it. And he got it down into the part of the ballpark where it just kept going back. As you can see, you can tell by the way Newman reacted. He thought he had, had room for that ball all the way, but it just kept moving. The Longhorns taking control here in the top of the fourth. They now reach double-digit figures with 10 runs. They have a three-run lead suddenly after trailing seven to nothing. Steve Buffet gets an inside pitch. He started this, this rally with a single. 
He's one for two. Strike. Now we talked about that Aggie earned run average. It was only 3.07 coming into the uh, game in Southwest Conference play, and only 3.00 overall. It's taking a beating here in the fourth inning. That ball is hit high in the left field against the right field against the wind, but that won't be caught easily. And the rally is finally over, but not before. Texas comes up with eight runs on five hits, no errors, three walks. That's the key. And a grand slam home run by David Tolleson to give the Longhorns a 10-7 lead in the middle of the this evening at 7 o'clock, same day delay. The American Capital Invitational Tennis Tournament from River Oaks. The finals. Magnus Gustafsson quits. Long Long Cousins from Sweden will go against Derek Rostanio. And we'll also have some doubles action as well. Enjoy. Jim Parker for the action at 7. We're back to the bottom of the fourth. The crowd now trying to get the Aggies back into this fast, uh, baseball game. 10-7 Texas lead. Curry Harden, who came on trailing by seven runs, suddenly now has a lead to work with, and Texas has the bullpen working because, as we said earlier, Curry Harden has not gone that long before. Up, oh, Chuck. Noblock takes the first pitch high for ball one. These pitchers in both teams are just not having a good time getting the ball down. That's why it's 10 to 7. That's right. Knobloch takes that ball right at the right fielder. Solidly hit, but that's a long out. That was struck right at David Tolleson for out number one here in the fourth inning. That will bring to the plate John Byington, who has a double. In two at bats. Also has two runs batted in. Curveball misses, ball one. One thing you got to be aware of, of course, with the Aggies is they probably aren't finished scoring. They may have scored seven in the first and have not scored since, but you got to figure they're not done. Way inside, ball two. We mentioned that Texas A&M has scored in 10 or more runs in 19 games. They're 19 and 0. Texas has scored 10 or more runs now 16 times this season. Coming into today, they were 14 and 1 in those games. They did lose a game to Texas Lutheran by a score of 12 to 11. What I think they've done so far is, well, here, we'll go to this pitch first. Shot at third base. Long throw gets him in time. That nice a, play by Newkirk. Yeah, Newkirk stayed right with The ball was hit fairly well. What the Longhorns have done would not be really classified as Gus Ball with one exception. They have taken advantage of what Texas has given them. They've not done it with hit and runs or steals or bunts, but they took advantage of the walks and the hit batters, and then they came in with the big hits to drive in the runs. And that's, uh, that's kind of a Texas... Uh, uh, trademark, if you make a mistake or you give them anything, they'll take advantage of it. Gus Ball at its finest. Here's the pitch to Eric Albright, the catcher, who is one for two. Outside ball one. Well, to me, the key statistic in the top of that fourth inning was the uh, three walks. That's what really got AM into trouble. Brown chopper, Newkirk will have to hurry on this one. Makes the throw and gets in. Very short inning for the University of Texas pitcher Curry Harden, which will make him happy as the Aggies go 1-2-3. We're through four innings now. Texas leads 10-7. Hey, watch it, bud. Betsy, take her. No, go ahead, bud. Hey, hold the door. Right Presenting Budweiser Long Necks to Go in Handy 6 and 12. Get off uh, done with that paper? Light 12, now good. Come on, bud. Got a window on our window, bud. Excuse me, bud. Just put the overhead. Not smoking, bud. Just an airfly. Presenting Here we go. Budweiser Long Necks to Go in Handy 12. Hey, check out the window. Commuter fly. And six packs. You can eat those peanuts. Beating the Honda Prelude could be a challenge, but look at it this way. This sporty Mazda MX-6 beats it by over $2,500. Its warranty covers you for an additional 14,000 miles. MX-6 has far more room inside.
ride. And right now, it comes with $750 cash back from Mazda. How's that for a good reason to make the move to Mazda? See your local Mazda dealer today and get $750 cash back on MX-6. You, too, can hit like the pro through actual hitting classes and drills with Pittsburgh Pirate Scout Tommy Mansky at Central Florida's Baseball World. Learn from slow motion analysis, freeze frame video, and still photography. Hi, I'm Glenn Davis. I'm so impressed with this teaching video by Tommy Mansky that I've given it my complete endorsement. And when you watch it, you'll see why. To order Teaching the Mechanics of the Major League Swing, call toll-free now. 1-800-833-1551. 1-800-833-1551. Back at CE, Pat Olson Field on the campus of Texas A&M, where Texas takes a 10-7 lead into the top of the fifth inning. The Longhorns sent 11 batters to the plate at the top of the fourth to get eight runs and retake the lead. In the bottom of the fourth, Texas A&M went down 1-2-3, and that is the first half inning where that has happened in this game today. John Prather, the catcher, who came into the game batting 145, but is one for one. He's been, uh, has a single, scored a run, and then uh, walked and also scored a run, so he scored two runs today. Here's the first pitch by Steve Hughes, good first strike. He was born in Tyler, Texas, and resides in San Augustine, where he went to high school. None of the pitchers that we've seen in this game for either team really throw extremely hard in the, the high 80s, for instance, as a fastball. So consequently, if they're not, if their control is off, they'll get rattled. There he is. He's going on three pitches this time. Strikeout number one for Hughes. Out number one for Texas. The top of the fifth. That will be. Here's the pitch outside corner. Brayther was just totally locked on this one. Didn't have a chance. That will bring to the plate the leadoff batter for the lineup, Lance Jones, who is two for three. And he hits the first pitch right to the shortstop. Now has got the throw. Not in time. Bad throw through uh, easily off the bag. Let's see how they rule that. I'm sure it'll be an error or shortstop. That it is. He rushed it, it looks like. He's look at the good position. That's a good position for young players. He's ready to move. And he picked it up, and then he put extra zip on the ball, and it sailed on him. Did he come down in? Nope, that was a good, call. good call. It looked like the ball might have handcuffed him a little bit in the glove. It came on the, on the palm of the glove, and I don't think he felt like he had a good grip on it. Second Aggie error. David Lauer come to the plate. He walked on the three walks last inning. Hughes gives a very weak half-hearted effort over to first base for Jones, who uh, is a threat to go. Inside, pitch gets away. Jones will move to second. That will probably be a pass ball, but let's wait and see. Wild pitch. Alan Cannon says, so that's another wild pitch for Aggie pitching. The sophisticated press box speaker system is Alan Cannon yelling. <laughs> <laughs> He's got overflow crowd in the press. The press box there, of course, is full with three broadcasters, including us. Riders are out on the wings. Outside corner for a strike. One and one to the count, one out, top of the fifth. Texas trailed by seven after the first inning, but they have scored ten straight runs to take a three-run lead as they try to win their second straight game here at College Station. Bad swing by that time by Lowry. Took something off, and even though it was up, the changeup fooling. with a fairly short lead at second. Outside. Even the count at two and two. 
Well, you, know, you have to talk about maybe momentum that Texas picked up last night with that great game from Dressendorf. Texas A&M, of course, ranked number one, deservedly so, but the Longhorns beat the Aggies five times last year. And I know the Texas players felt that they've got to win in that first game that it might help the momentum go for today's two games. Shot right the middle. That'll be a base hit, and that will score a run. Jones comes across. Throw way up third base side. And gives David Lowe an RBI single. So it's an unearned run as a result of... Uh, Jones getting on the bag, but it doesn't matter as far as the scoreboard is concerned. It's 11 to 7. And Lowry reaches first base for the third time. Shot right up the middle. Fastball is slightly to the outside part of the plate and low. The throw was really horrible as he rainbowed it, but Lowry did not have any plans on trying to go into second. Catcher Albright came out and intercepted. Next up will be Scott Bryan. Go for one. He's been drove in a run with his walk. There's a high chopper to third. They'll go to second for one. Over to first. Got him. Third double play of the day for Texas A&M. A, a little late as the Longhorns do get a run. On one hit, one error. No one left on base. We're through four and a half. Texas leads Texas A&M 11 to 7. Sports Entertainment brings you a memorable month of sports in May. Major League Baseball moves into full swing with a great American and National League lineup featuring the Houston Astros and the Texas Rangers. The Astros host the Montreal Expos, St. Louis Cardinals, and Pittsburgh Pirates, while the Rangers take on Cleveland, New York, Baltimore, Minnesota, and Kansas City. From the stars of today to the stars of tomorrow, college baseball battles for a spot in the College World Series. You'll see Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. Arkansas versus Texas A&M and the SWC Conference Tournament semifinal and final game. For golfing fans, HSC goes abroad for the Volvo PGA Championship from Wentworth, England featuring Ian Woosnam, Sammy Ballesteros, and Sandy Lyle. We've also got Pro Beach Volleyball, the Pin and Chase, Professional Tennis, Collegiate Track and Field, Horse Racing, a special presentation of the Texas Special Olympics, and more in May on HSC, where the game's on us. Bottom of the fifth, Texas A&M trailing by four runs. We'll send Andy Duke, Mike Easley, and Travis Williams to the plate. Cliff Gustafson has been in this position many, many times. Going after his 20th Southwest Conference title, but there's a team in Fayetteville, Arkansas, that uh, has been very strong this year. As, uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks went for a rare triple crown. They won football and basketball, and they want to get baseball as well. Rightly or wrongly, they, they have the unfortunate situation of being across the border, and sometimes they get shortchanged in Texas, but Arkansas is super. Yes. The longest appearance, as we said, four and a third innings, and he, of course, has gone four complete innings now since Shane Reynolds did not get an out in the first inning. And there's his first pitch, low for a ball, but now in the bottom of the fourth, he only had to throw five pitches to get three outs. There's Andy Duke, one for one. That ball is lifted high into the air, but this time the wind will knock it down. Collison's over to make the catch in right center field for out number one. Now Curry Harden is uh, settling in. He's doing exactly what Cliff Gustafson needed. Last year, I think it, it's, it's interesting to point out that he was 10-1 and one and was one of the main pitchers on the team uh, and uh, just really not didn't get off the mark uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, Cliff was saying he just was making bad pitches. He didn't have really a hard problem. Yeah. He, just, he just was not making good pitches. Don't bring Mike Easley, the first baseman, up. He is one for two. He has a double and one batted in as well as striking out. Harden has now set down five batters in a row, and in this game, that's a feat. Outside, ball one. That'll get you in the pitcher's Hall of Fame for this game. <laughs> Texas did have left-hander Brian Dare up last inning, but Harden worked so strongly and so quickly, he's, he sat back down. There's a ground ball to second baseman. Takes on the third hop over to first, and there's two out. 
two outs, four pitches for Curry Harden. This now officially his longest stint as a pitcher this year. He's gone four and two thirds innings now. An easy play for Lowry and Harden is doing what he does when he is on. He is making them hit the ball. He's never been really a strikeout pitcher. Keeps him off stride. He's done it well. Here's the first pitch to Travis Williams, the designated hitter for Texas A&M, who struck out on three pitches his last time in the third inning. He is 0 for 2 in this game. Two out, and there's ball two. Next up will be the bottom of the order, Jim Newman for the Aggies. Should Williams get on base? There's a strike. Texas playing Williams slightly to left. Pretty straight away, though. Fairly deep. Especially in center field where the wind is blowing out. Outside. how long he can go because of just in terms of strength just, this is as long as he's gone all year there's a strike that will bring the count full with two out well while it's the longest he's gone this year as I pointed out before he was a starter much of last year so he he's done it just not this year Mentioned earlier, he is from College Station, but the AM Consolidated. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Swing and a tip. He really tied him up with that. And that, the only reason that uh, Williams was able to get a piece of it was because of the speed. It was slow enough that he was able to react. That was purely a defensive swing. Williams, just a freshman. There's a ground ball deep into short. There's the throw and got him. Steve Buffet makes the nice throw. So Curry Harden sets down his eighth straight batter. And Texas A&M comes up with nothing in the bottom of the fifth. We are through five innings. Texas 11, Texas A&M 7. For the Southwest Conference games next weekend, we will take a hiatus, but we'll return on Saturday, April 29th. And is that going to be important? Texas versus Arkansas from Fayetteville. Doubleheader starting at noon. We'll take a look at these red-hot Razorbacks who lead the league at 12 and 0. Greg Lucas back in along with Steve Ross as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Arthur Butcher leads things off. Arthur has a hit, scored a run. 11 to 7, Texas. Steve Hughes pitching better since he started the last inning, although he did give up an unearned run. He's given up a total of four, three of them earned. Fastball is up top. Still plenty of time for Aggie backers. The only distressing thing for Aggie backers is the fact that they scored seven in the first and haven't really threatened much since. Foul away. While Texas has threatened and or scored every inning. They have not been retired one, two, three yet. The Aggies have now been retired one, two, three, two innings in a row. And only one hit in the third inning makes it not be three in a row. There's a hard shot off Hughes. He's hurt. Coming out quickly is Albright, the catcher, and it's not in time. That's a base hit. Hughes caught that. It looked like at first glance right off the side of the knee, but he's going to walk it off. That's like fouling one off in the batter's box off his ankle. That's a really sharp. Let's see exactly where this gets him. First impression is he got the side of the knee. Let's see if first impression is right. It looks like it's going to be right off the ankle. Well, let's see. Bounced up and might have still got the toe. Yeah, I think I'm on the ankle and the toe, yeah. Good little uh, Barishnikov move out there. Put some music behind that. He will be okay. He's going to get some extra warm-up tosses here to double check. And Jim Waller will chat with him. Meanwhile, Butcher is at first with his second hit as they play the theme from Nash. The crowd, I think, out 
outside the ballpark uh, along the railroad tracks is getting larger and larger as the day goes on. Well, it's a great day to get a tan if you're going to watch a little college baseball. After the miserable weather we had for about a week in this part of uh, the country, it is quite a respite. These guys must know something about the train schedules. They uh, must not be planning to have any come through for a while. Eddie Toledo. Eddie was hit by a pitch twice and flied out. Breaking ball foul hard down into the bullpen area, just short of the bullpen. This Texas lineup is the same lineup last night, except that Butcher and Toledo have flip-flopped. Toledo batted cleanup last night, Butcher fit, and today they just reversed it. And it has moderately been a factor. Butcher has one run batted in when he walked with the bases loaded, but other than that, neither of them have really figured much in the scoring. Eddie Toledo began the day at 350. One ball and one strike, temperature up to 80 degrees on the scoreboard. Thermometer. Bounce stopped by Albright. Good play. Well, he's putting on a duel. I thought he was putting on a fake, and he wasn't. He didn't know where it was. Runner at first base is Butcher. The Aggies who have turned three double plays could use a fourth year to make sure that the Longhorns don't get any more runs. Only in the top of the sixth at 3.20. We started at one. These two teams are going to have a long day because this is a split double header. They will play another game tonight that will be televised nationally on ESPN have longer than the normal 25 minutes between games. There goes the runner. Here's the throw from Albright. Not in time. A good throw, but I, uh, the umpire saying he missed the tag. They've gotten the tag behind the leg as the leg went into the bag. That was a really nice throw by Albright. He came out. Butcher gets a pretty good jump here. Let's see the throw. It throws to the first base side of the bag, and out of dust there, but it looks like he missed it. Looks like he got him behind the leg as the leg was on the back. That was the sixth stolen base of the year for Butcher at 7-5. Nice throw. Nice throw. But he, yeah, it looks like he got behind him. He, he did get in. And another run will perhaps score. Here comes Butcher on Toledo's base hit. Newman is up, and they're going to hold him. Newman got that ball in nicely, and it was a very well-thrown ball into the infield. Cut off by Byington. Gustafson sent Butcher around third at first, but then he took another look at how shallow the ball was, and Butcher got a wide turn at third, so he made Butcher come back. The first signal was, come on in to home, but then he, he held him up. Well, the Aggies are serious about this thing. They're going to make another pitching change. There's the good throw. But you notice the cutoff man on that play yep. is, the, is uh, uh, Byington, the third baseman. He comes down the line. He was the cutoff man. And we are going to have yet another pitching change. It's a right-hander, and it looks like... Well, I didn't even catch him one. Well, I didn't one up there very long. Could it it be might 22? be sweet. It might be. No, I it's sweet. 20... I thought it was 26, but let's see if he gets here. I'm thinking it's 28. Anthony De La Cruz. We should have known by the theme music being played. <laughs> <laughs> it's Anthony De La Cruz. He's a right-hander. The fourth Aggie pitcher. De La Cruz has been in 10 games. He is 5-0 with a 2.93 earned run average. He's pitched 27 and two-thirds innings. He's got... Doesn't have a save. He's given 23 hits, 12 runs, 9 of the burned, struck out 31 while walking 12. You know, one thing I think that is pointed out, look at that earned run average, and he's the fourth pitcher used. That's the kind of pitching the Aggies have year. They have depth in that pitching staff. You run down the earned run averages from top to bottom. 196, 229, 247, 261, 262, 293, 304, and uh, 390. 
9.96. Ronnie Allen is the highest earned run average of the regular starters. And those are the guys that have done all the pitching. There are three other pitchers that have yeah. seen some action, and they're the only ones that have fairly high earned run average. Now, one slightly disturbing statistic, if you're an A&M fan for De La Cruz, is he's pitched 27 and two-thirds innings, and he's given up four home runs. Now, that's second on the staff in terms of giving up home runs. Well, he's <laughs> going to face a guy who's already hit one. In fact, the first two hitters he will face have already hit one in this game. Thomason, grand slam homer, his last time up in the fourth, and he'll be followed by Newkirk, who had a solo shot right after. Let's take a look at this grand slammer. Wind blowing out to left center. This is off Steve Hughes. Right in the wheelhouse. So back, 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 and out of the park. That one had some help, but that was going to make it. And you can see it uh, made a Longhorn dugout very jubilant. And Collison made it around the bases pretty fast for a home run. We talked about Texas not having the overall power that Texas A&M has displayed, but the Longhorns have had a penchant for hitting grand slam home runs this year. <laughs> yes. The difference in totals coming into this game was 55 home runs for A&M and 34 for Texas. Here is Tottleson, who has that one big hit in three at-bats. Runners on the corners, nobody out. David Cruz now into pitch. And he's got the same problem most pitchers have had. Fastball high. Trying to figure out uh, with, with Hughes numbers here when we get a chance. It takes a while on some of these pitches yeah. the way this game's going. 11 to 7 Texas, but the Longhorns are threatening to make it more. Crowd uh, looking for a reason to get back into this baseball game, of course, here at College Station. I guess Hughes went one and a third uh, innings. Okay, one and two thirds, let's see. One and two thirds. Got no one out here in the sixth. One ball and two strikes. He gave up five hits. So far, just four runs, three earned, but the two on base are his. Just missed a little low. Two balls and two strikes. Dina Cruz seems to have a little more zip on his fastball than uh, most of the pitchers we've seen so far today. He uh, spent his freshman year at West Ark Community College and then uh, transferred to Des Moines. You see, there's a swing and a miss. Yeah. That's a fastball the Texas batters have not seen today. Collison way behind that pitch. They'll bring up Craig Dukert, who hit a home run in the fourth. Here's that pitch again. Outside corner, and Collison way behind it. Looks like it may have had a little slide on it. Here's Newkirk, who has two hits. Single in the second and hit a solo homer in the fourth. Part of an eight one inning. Highlight was the grand slam by Thomason. Another hard strike one. I think Mark Johnson's just going to tell Mr. De La Cruz, just throw it as hard as you can. He can be very overpowering. Last year, De La Cruz had one start. For A&M against North Texas State and allowed just one hit in five innings pitched. His debut as a junior college pitcher, he had a no-hitter. One ball and one strike. That was at West Ark before he transferred to uh, Des Moines Community College and then A&M. One ball and one strike. Runners on the corner. Runner at first going. Hit run play. Slice to the right side. It will be a foul ball. Oh. Toledo was running at first. Hit and run. Set up for Newkirk. Is just a strike. One ball and two strikes. Toledo has four stolen bases on 
Not much for a threat to go right now. A lot of those, no doubt, at least some of them, no doubt as a result of hitting runs that didn't, didn't work. He stays this time, and there's a high fly ball. Deep left center field, ranging back for it is Thompson to the warning track. He can't handle it. One run will score, and everyone else moves up a base on the error by the center fielder, Thompson. It is 12 to 7, Texas. The ball very high, and again, the center fielder had some trouble like Eddie Toledo at first base for Texas has had in, in, I don't think he really saw that all the way in the sun. We don't have any clouds. It's a very bright day, and he didn't get a very good jump on the ball off the bat. That is the 12th run, and he's charged to Hughes as far as runs, but it is not an earned run yet because we'll see how the inning progresses. That would have been the second out. The hitter now is Steve Bethay. Now they will give uh, Newkirk a sacrifice and uh, run batted in on that. Right, because he would have scored even if he'd caught it. One ball and no strikes. Steve Bethay flied out to right his last time, pops it foul on the roof. Bethay hit into a double play in the second, singled, and scored later in the fourth, and flied to right as the third out of the fourth. Runner out on the, the bases, uh, Toledo is down at second, Newkirk is at first. That could be two. Taylor, not block, easily, high throw, and it may be another run. Here comes the run to score. Well, yet another error for Texas A&M. Now, they're going to complain about interference. Yeah, Knobloch is having a with the base umpire saying he went out of his way to get him off the play. That's the argument. Knobloch is saying that's why his throw was wide. He gets bumped out of the play by his head coach to make sure he doesn't get tossed. They're claiming that Craig Newkirk interfered going down to second base. Let's take a look. There's the pitch. No, I don't know. He's pretty wide. That's just a bad throw. Yeah. So the run uh, scores a second run and another error. That is four errors for the Aggies. The second on not today. And again, the error is charged not because the runner at first uh, runner uh, at second uh, or first was safe but because the runner scored very uncharacteristic of this texas a&m baseball team they had only committed eight errors in 10 games before today in conference play they now have 12 in 11 i think they just threw not out of the ball game i believe the base on fire has done that Block. They couldn't calm him down. And the crowd not happy. Well, here's the play again. Now, again, he's saying that the runner yep. went out of the way to get him, but he didn't. He was just standing up. There was nothing absolutely wrong with that at all. Now, but see, now the problem here is... They called him safe because Newkirk's over standing over at third. I think that's part of the... Ooh, let's see. We got runners at... First and third. You're right. <laughs> I think that's I don't part know why they were arguing. arguing. they were arguing because of the wild yeah. throw. Oh, well, in that case... No we, wonder they were arguing. Let's take a look at that one again. <laughs> we're, we were looking for the wrong thing. Yeah, we were thought they were complaining about interference, but... We may have had also the head coach tossed out, too. I... Jason Marshall is going in to play shortstop, number three. Uh, now, here comes, now, here comes Johnson again, I believe. Now, they're calling him out. Okay. There they go. They're now not they're calling straight. That was... That, okay. There you go. <laughs> I think, I think Matlock was... 
I think it was, yeah, yeah, I think he was. I think it had to do with what we thought at first right. Meanwhile, Newkirk just went down to third base. What, the, what heck? the heck? Maybe they called him safe. <laughs> and then they discovered that he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, Texas gets another run. So the bottom line is, it appeared that the umpire on the bases, Mr. McKay, was totally correct. And it was one of those things where emotions get you as far as Chuck Knobloch, because he made the bad throw, and he was hoping. Here's John Fraser. Shortstop is Marshall. Crowd really getting into it now, because of uh, Knobloch, it's kind of like getting a technical in basketball, and fired up the crowd. 13 to 7 is the score with a runner at first and two outs. And there's a strike. And again, the crowd is getting back into this basket, uh, baseball game. That's what it sounded like. Yeah. Right. Well, as, as we say before, you can't count the Aggies out with the bats they've got. They've got the ninth place here in the top of the order, minus Chuck Knobloch coming up in the sixth. And that's the other thing. This is only the sixth. I was going to say there were supposed to be about two hours in between ball games today, Greg. But uh, the rate this is going, they might even get not even get the 25 minutes between the first and second game. Thirteen to seven with three minutes and three thirty-four the time. <laughs> I'm thinking basketball too. Eighty uh, degrees our temperature. Sunshiny day and it's thirteen to seven. Texas. Got him. So Prather strikes out. But two more runs come across the plate for Texas on two hits. There were two errors. And uh, three men, or one man left on base. So we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 13 to 7. Texas, the Aggies coming to bat. Number one in rugged apparel. That's Academy. Men's wool rich cotton shorts or casual shirts under $20. The difference at Academy is the price. That's right, Bubba. The forest is home to many living things. That's why, if you're careless with fire when you go to the forest, you could burn a lot more than trees. school education into something meaningful, like a career in the United States Marine Corps. Call now. Major League Baseball, the Astros currently on the West Coast, but when they return, these are the games that will be shown on Home Sports Entertainment Series with the Philadelphia Phillies, Monday through Wednesday, April 24th through the 26th. The New York Mets take on the Astros, Friday and Saturday, the 28th and 29th. And of course, Major League Baseball resumes tomorrow with the Texas Rangers, Live in all markets except Houston, which we'll be seeing Houston Rocket basketball and continuing Tuesday and Wednesday in all markets against the Milwaukee Brewers. Here's Newman. He chops the first ball down to the third baseman, Newkirk. One down. Well, Curry Harden continues to make the hitters hit his pitch and dispatch them quickly. He has now retired the last eight in a row. And ever since he had a spot of trouble in the second inning, after two outs, he has been virtually untouched. One base hit by Kirk Thompson, who's up now. Thompson is three for three. Aggies have made four errors, long on one. The errors have contributed to some of these extra runs. I uh, did talk with the official score, and Craig Newkirk was initially called safe by the 
infield umpire. And that's what Knobloch was arguing about. And finally, the home plate umpire overruled him and called him out. But that's why Knobloch was tossed, was uh, arguing about uh, Newkirk. Well, in that case, then uh, he's got a rightful complaint. Yes. Because he's out of the game for something that he was right about. Yes. Of course, we don't know what he said. Two balls and a strike, and that sort of overrules anything else. Three balls and a strike. Crowd, Aggie crowd, of course, yelling Curry. Trying to shake Curry hard enough. It hasn't worked yet. He's been very effective. Shane Reynolds started the game, got nobody out in the first. Curry Harden has been on ever since, and now Thompson is on base for the fourth time. That's only the first walk given up by Harden. When he first came into the game, perhaps because he wasn't really loose yet, he was ripped. He came in and faced Albright in the first. He got him out on a ground ball, but then Duke singled. He easily doubled. He got Williams on a pop-up. Newman doubled. Thompson singled before he finally was able to get out of the inning. But since then, he's been quite effective. There is going to be some activity in the bullpen, though, for Texas. And uh, Chris Gaskell, I believe, is going down there. Yes, number 31. Chris Gaskell, a right-hander, a freshman. Terry Taylor. Taylor, of course, with long ball stroke. Hit 13 home runs this year. He's one for three in this game. Taylor from Houston Waltrip High School. Hit 17 home runs last year. Harden had put uh, eight straight AM batters down until Thompson got on board. to seven. Here's the pitch to Taylor, and it's inside. Two balls and no strikes, and Harden knows there's action down on the bullpen. <laughs> He's aware of that. It's Chris Gaskill, who has not pitched since March 28th. It's interesting to see how he can do if he does, in fact, come in. He had a real good ball, strong pitcher. Now we got a What's this? Check the ball. It passed. There's the ball on the collegiate rank has to be in pretty bad shape. And not quite so picky about uh, being in perfect condition as they are in the major league level. Two balls and no strikes. fans can take heart because if Taylor gets on, even though Knobloch is out and he would have been the next hitter, they've got a bunch of them after him. After that spot. Jason Marshall is in the on-deck circle, so the freshman would apparently hit, stay in the game. There's a strike. Jason Marshall, while only appearing in 21 games with 23 bats, is batting 435. I'd say he's earned his, uh, his A uniform. He's hitting like one. Three balls and a strike. There's a drive. Kiss it. Goodbye. Good innings in 
concerns of shutting down A&M until right now. That home run, by the way, would have been out of any ballpark. That was into the wind, essentially, in the right field. He just jacked it. A line drive home run, and Taylor, with great power, shows that power here. With Gustafson, will waste no time. I know Curry Harden doesn't want to come out being from College Station, but this game is far from over. And Chris Gaskill, who has been UT's late-inning stopper, will be coming in. A right-hander. He's given up just five earned runs in 26 and a third relief innings for 1.71 ERA. He has started two games this year. He's a freshman from Houston Westfield as Harden leaves. Actually, his numbers now can be totaled. He uh, went five and a third. And let's see, give him another hit here. He, he gave up by uh, my count seven. It's five runs all earned, walk one, struck out three. Gaskill from Houston Westfield led all pitchers in the fall in strikeouts with 61 in just 59 innings. They were counting on him to become a late-inning relief ace. This isn't really late yet. No. We're talking about the sixth inning, but kind of game you got to just put a bandage on the bleeding to make sure it doesn't get too bad. His longest relief stint has been two and two-thirds innings. This can be a dominating pitcher. He was uh, he has an outstanding fastball and a sharp breaking curve can often be overpowering. He was drafted out of high school by the Atlanta Braves after he allowed just four earned runs in his entire senior season <laughs> and led all Houston area pitchers with a 0.50 earned run average. And as we know, there are quite a few good baseball players that have come out of Houston, so he was having to pitch against some pretty good hitters. He is certainly well rested. He has not pitched since March 28th when he went against Nebraska for two and two-thirds innings, giving up one hit, one run. He was unearned. He struck out three and walked two. Watching him warm up, he's got a sharp breaking pitch, as we said. If he can control it, he is going to be very dangerous because he does have a good fastball in the mid to upper 80s. His four saves lead the team in that category. He was born in a place that he'd like to visit. Every June, if he could, he was born in Omaha. Now, it will be interesting to see how he, he is a freshman, and he's only pitched in one Southwest Conference game. And, of course, this is a pretty tough spot to come in on the road against the number one team in the nation. Not a pretty tough spot for Jason Marshall, too, the fellow freshman. Now Marshall has 10 hits and 23 at-bats for a 435 average. He also has eight runs batted in. He's from Abilene Cooper. Who has, Abilene Cooper has supplied a number of Longhorns. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. Now this could be the, the battle of the, the great high school pitcher and the great high school hitter. Marshall, as a senior, hit 430 with 70 RBIs in high school. There's a sharp breaking ball for strike two. His cousin, Jason Marshall's cousin, Ryan Little, played for Texas A&M, of course, also with the Montreal Expos, White Sox, and Yankees. Stayed off the breaking ball. No, he didn't. Well, Snaps on the appeal that time. The head of the bat out over the plate, so that is up number two. Take a look.
Now the Yankees get two in the sixth on a two-run humble by Terry Taylor. One hit, no errors, none left. 13 to nine. The count in favor of Texas with the Longhorns coming up. So crisp and clean, so refreshing, it's the king of beers. This much, this much, this much for you. with 13 runs today the last time they scored 13 runs last week they defeated Texas Tech 13 to 3 the Longhorns by the way in case you you ain't in fans would like to take heart they've given up 10 or more runs six times this year and of course A&M is very close to there right now with none Lance Jones has scored twice he has two hits reached on an error the last time De La Cruz Came in in the sixth and actually pitched the full inning. Got all three of the outs while he was in. After the first two hitters got base hits. They both scored. He is one ball and one strike. If you joined this or if you thought you were going to be watching something else this late, uh, since we started at 1 o'clock, uh, the little recap. Texas A&M scored seven runs in the bottom of the first. But Texas, after scoring two in the third, got eight in the fourth and took the lead. They upped the lead to 13 to seven before the Aggies got two back in the bottom of the sixth, and it's 13 to nine. That is about as much intimate detail as we can afford to give with that many runs on the board. Two balls and two strikes. Big hit was a grand slam home run by David Tollison, and then a second home run back to backs by Craig Newkirk. That all came in that eight run inning. Two run homer for the Aggies, Terry Taylor. Struck him out. There's no doubt about it. Texas not used to seeing the heat they're getting from Anthony De La Cruz. He's throwing much harder than the other Aggie pitchers of the day, and Texas consistently behind his fastball. Here we have to gear it up. See, he was just simply overmatched on that fastball. Here's David Lowry. Lowry has a base hit. He's walked twice, hit into a double play, one for two officially, and he takes a strike. Began the day hitting 346. Lowry led the nation's junior college hitters at Panola JC at 88 with a cool 525. And he's shown that wasn't a fluke by coming up here to 346. He also started his college career in Texas. He's out of uh, Texas, but he began his college career at Lamar and then transferred to junior college and came to UT. Two balls and a strike. He played with the liberal BJs with Steve Bethay this summer. Two on, three one. Now you got Scott Bryant on deck, so obviously De La Cruz would be wise to throw strikes to Lowry. For a couple of reasons. One big one is that Bryant is due. There's a strike. High strike. Well, Holbrook, the uh, home plate umpire, has been giving that outside corner to all pitchers all day long. No one should be surprised this is called a strike. This has been a strike all day long. Might be surprised on the height. Height, a little bit. <laughs> yep. Here's the 3-2. Just missed that time. That was a little low, and it's Lowry at first. 
First walk given up by De La Cruz, and here's Bryant. We talk about Bryant being due. When you're a 363 hitter and uh, you don't have any today, you're due. Although he did have three last night. A couple of times, been no fault of his own. He was hit by a pitch in the first and walked in the fourth. In between, he has struck out and hit into a double play. Runner at first is Lowry. Oh, got hit again. That was old. That was that hit him rather severely too. That was a fastball in on him, and that is what? That, that's five or four or five. Let's see, Allen hit three. I don't have to count. I think I may have lost track. Oh, boy, there was no chance to get out of the way of that pitch. Scott Bryant was handcuffed from the word go. Let's see, I've got, I guess it's a total of four. That's four. First, yeah, De La Cruz first, although there have been a couple that have been close. If you're looking for a statistic that has to worry Mark Johnson in terms of his pitchers, that's four hit batters and six walks. That's ten Texas runners getting a free pass, and that'll that, kill you. Yeah, and then you throw in two errors that's that right. put people on base. Uh, Lance Jones reached it directly as a result of an error on the shortstop, and the Newkirk uh, on the error by the center fielder, they got on base as a result of those errors. So that is, that's 12 base runners that uh, Texas really didn't have to do anything to get, except send somebody up to the plate. That almost hit him. That yeah. bounced up in front of the plate. This is uh, Arthur Butcher, who has a couple of hits, two out of three. Well, if you give teams extra outs, which is what you're doing when you uh, make errors, certainly, or free tickets to first base, which is what you do when you hit them or walk them, you're going to lose a lot. Fortunately for the Aggies, they have not done that much this year. Upstairs, and it's two balls and no strikes. Crowd getting a little nervous again. You were mentioning earlier, Greg, off camera, that Texas, should they win, might be putting Mississippi State into the number one spot in the national rankings next week. Yeah, Mississippi State won the first two games of their three-game series with LSU, so they've already won the series. And I would think if Texas wins two out of three here, certainly if they win three out of three, but if they win two out of three, I think it's uh, very, very possible. Of course, that's why they play a tournament, too. You're going to have a winner eventually. And Butcher hits it another when it's three balls and a strike. Well, he's one ball away from having the bases loaded. And again, same pattern. A walk, a hit batsman, and maybe another walk. Outside. Well, they're jammed. And it's Eddie Toledo. If you've ever heard the term Gus Ball, which was coined for some Cliff Gustafson teams back in the early 80s and late 70s that scratch runs any way they could, this is a classic example. Getting men on base any way you can. Now, if you want to see how atypical this is, you know, we talked about comparing pitching staffs. Texas with an earned run average of 3.88, uh, Texas A&M 3.00, which is better. But Texas has more strikeout pitchers and a little better control on a ratio standpoint, although this is still atypical for the Aggies. They've struck out 288 and walked 160 coming into this game. And today's just not been their day so far. Eddie Toledo takes a first pitch for a strike. Eddie singled in the sixth for his only hit. He's been hit by a pitch twice, as has Bryant. Both these big, strong, right-handed batters are taking all the pitches. Out of the way. Yeah, the four, four players that have been hit, it's been the same two people twice. Well, they are. It's physically the most imposing. And the pitchers were trying to handcuff them on the inside. And that's the way they've been pitching to Bryant. They've really been trying to jam him, and that's one of the reasons he has no hits. No balls and two strikes. Base is loaded, one out. Still nothing in two. Greg Lucas here along with Steve Ross. Again, we'll have a weekend hiatus from Southwest Conference or college baseball from the Southwest Conference next week. But we'll be back with the doubleheader from Arkansas on the 29th. And that'll be a 
certainly a big series. We mentioned earlier Arkansas going for the rare triple crown. They were Southwest Conference champions in football and basketball and they're leading baseball. No balls and two strikes. Breaking ball just missed. Ooh. You couldn't Ooh. bet these people in the crowd that that would miss. Nor I don't think Mr. Albright the catcher. Let's take a look. Well, or me. <laughs> <laughs> one ball and two strikes with one out. We talked about how he's been giving that outside corner all day long, but not on that pitch. That one stayed up. And it is two balls and two strikes. Anthony De La Cruz from San Angelo. Scott Centala starts to loosen. He was racked last night for the Grand Slam. He was a loser. Two balls and two strikes. High pop-up on the infield. It drops, but it's an infield fly. And now, we've got a problem. They've got a double play here at first base because Butcher left. He's running his own, uh, and that's a double play home play. Player. That's just, that Texas ran themselves right out of the inning. Arm, though. I didn't see the arm until after he missed it. Did you see the Yes, sir. Yeah, he called it an in infield fly right away. All right. I was looking because I was waiting to see. It was an infield fly. Turns into a double play. And let's take a look at it again. to the umpire, but he, as soon as the catcher made the move to try to get it, he called in Phil Flyroll. Well, good for Albright that it was, and the Aggies, 13. Our ball game is approaching three hours, and we're going to the bottom of the seventh with Eric Albright, the catcher who, uh, thank goodness for the infield fly rule, because <laughs> he wanted to catch that ball, folks, and, but he didn't really have to, uh, and then Andy Duke and Mike Easley, well, a four-run deficit. Pitches up and in. Albright has one hit in three trips. What happened was the home plate umpire audibly immediately called the infield fly rule. Cliff Gustafson, the third base coach, saw it. He got Bryant and he got Lowry to hold on to second and third, but Arthur Butcher at first never saw the signal and he was burning his way to second base and got, got caught in a rundown and they got Lowry at home. As soon as he saw that the catcher wasn't going to catch it, the first thing he's thinking is I got to get down there to avoid a force out except that wasn't really it because the batter was already out. Two balls and a strike. Albright, Duke, and Easley. Normally when you get in a situation like this, five, six, and seven, you want to get a little bit of churn. There's a hard shot. Nice play by Bethay. Ooh, got to think that on plays like that, playing your home games, and I would say half your games, but of course in Texas' case, it's more than half, on the artificial turf where the ball gets out there very quickly, really serves you well. Yes. Because he's used to that ball getting to him quick. Here's Andy Duke. Texas, by the way, been two on national grass this year, and five and two on the road. There. This is the eighth game they've played on the road, and it's the eighth game they've played on grass. All their away games have been on grass. And it is their 49th game. So that shows you they have a home field advantage. Virtually all of their non-conference games, with the exception of a few home-and-home -home series with the biggies, like the Miamis and the, uh, Florida and the Arizonas, are played, or Arizona States are played at home. Of course, they got a series now, a uh, nice rivalry non-conference with Oklahoma this week. There's a strike. Drove in a run first. Speaking of Oklahoma, HNC fans will get a chance to see the Sooners against Oklahoma State in a couple of games uh, in May. And the ball is low. It is one ball and two strikes. We will have touched base originating games involving schools from three different conferences. And, of course, we have picked up action from the Sunshine Network, uh, which is joining us today. And the games involving Florida State and some of the other top teams in that part of the country. Half swing off the bat twice. Foul ball. 
Texas has an outstanding record against teams nationally ranked this season. The Longhorns have been a little bit inconsistent as far as Coach Gustin feels, but they, coming into today, they are 10-2 against teams that have been nationally ranked. They uh, took three from UCLA, which was ranked number 30 at the time. They took two of three from Arizona State, then ranked number seven, and two of three from then number two, Miami, and swept Oklahoma. Also ranked in the top point. Two balls and two strikes. Well, we were talking about the Cliffs team just yesterday when I was over in Baton Rouge and I was talking to the LSU coach Skip Burton. I said, well, Cliffs got one of those teams that on paper doesn't scare you, but it's the typical Cliff team. If you give him any openings, uh, they'll score some runs and they've got enough pitching to shut you down when you have to be shut down. And that's really the way they've played so far today. Although, again, we reiterate, it's not over. The Aggies have such a good hitting team, they could, they could blast this one open. But the pattern seems to be falling up to this point, the typical pattern. Gaskill in tight. It's three balls and two strikes. Easily, who has some power out. Actually, the next three hitters all had some power. Duke, Easley, Travis, Williams have all hit some long balls. Little half poke. That's going to drop in. No, an outstanding catch by Eddie Toledo. Oh, didn't know Eddie could move that well. Eddie Toledo did his imitation of a wide receiver going into the end zone to catch the alley-oop pass over his shoulder. He never saw that until it was in his glove. I don't see how he could have possibly really kept a line on it. That's a great play. That's the first baseman's version of Willie Mays in 1954. Taking it over the shoulder. Here's Mike Easley. Easley doubled and drove in a run in the first. He later scored. That's his only hit. One for three. Began the day hitting 325. 21 hits in the ball. 11 for the Longhorns, 10 for Texas A&M. Four-run difference, and the difference quite succinctly is the extra base runners that the Aggies have surrendered. Along that line, there have only been two walks given up by Texas. There's a fly left side curving toward the line. Butcher over in foul territory, and that retires the side. We shall be back with the eighth inning. Thomas and Newkirk and Bethay coming up for Texas. It's 13 to 9. Texas 13, AM 9. Top of the eighth inning. It will be Thomas and Newkirk and Bethay to face Anthony De La Cruz. De La Cruz and Gaskell, the last two pitchers, have been <laughs> most effective, you might know it, for uh, each team so far. De La Cruz has pitched two innings and struck out two, walked two, but he has allowed no runs. Tottleson struck out in the second, bounced into a fielder's choice to end the third. Homered with the bases loaded in the fourth, and then struck out in the sixth against De La Cruz. He was the first batter that De La Cruz faced. Howardy. Now Tollison will see if he can catch up to the fastball. Up to 83 degrees. The temperature here at Olsen Field. There's a strike. Don't forget, coming up tonight on Home Sports Entertainment at 7 o'clock will be the championship, singles championship, and then some doubles competition as well from the American Capital Classic, the River Oaks Tennis Tournament. Play this afternoon, same day delay. John Greer and Jim Parker will be calling the action. Pitches a little bit off. It is two balls and a strike. Then tomorrow on HSC, tomorrow evening, our network will separate in Houston. It will be the Houston Rockets. And in the San Antonio area, the Spurs will be playing the Rockets. And up in the Dallas area and uh, other portions of the network, we'll see Texas Ranger baseball as Nolan Ryan goes to the mound. That game will be played on a delay basis following the basketball games where everyone will have a chance to see it. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, not only on HSE, but on a couple of the other networks, in fact, I believe, as I recall, checking the schedule, Sunshine will have the other two games of the series between Milwaukee and Texas. Texas. 
missing. Ryan facing the same Milwaukee team that just last week he struck out 15 and gave him only one hit in getting his first win as a Texas Ranger. Be interesting to see. In fact, there was a lot of uh, talk in the Dallas papers following that game. But there's a drive out to the right center gap. That's going to drop in for a base hit off the wall. Taking the turn is Tollison, and he'll go into second base with a double. That ball hit directly into the wind. The wind is now shifted. It's almost blowing almost out to left all the way. Solid shot by Tollison. So he's in scoring position for Newker. Getting back to the point about Nolan Ryan, he... Uh, did not have a good curveball. He only threw about 11 of them in that game against Milwaukee and Milwaukee. But his fastball was so good and his changeup was so good that he got by. Uh, his question and the question of all is that now the Brewers have seen him. Will they be able to make the necessary adjustment? Well, maybe, but if he gets his curveball, they didn't see that. And he's got a good one. Maybe asking too much for 15 strikeouts, but he may still give them a lot of trouble. Here's Newkirk. single in the second, grounded the short in the fourth, homered right after Tollison did in the fifth. Actually, it's a sacrifice fly, but he also reached on an error by center fielder Thompson, who didn't handle it in the sixth, drove in a run. One ball and one strike. The matchup tonight for these two teams at the 7 o'clock, Ronnie Pedraza will be on the mound for Texas. He is 4-0 this season with a 1.57 on run average. Keith Langston, right-hander, who is 7-0 with a 2.47 ERA, will go for the Aggies. Raza, HSE fans saw a week ago, he is a very impressive freshman, and you'll have a chance to see him tonight, baseball fans, as this third and final game of the series will be carried on ESPN. One ball and two strikes. Craig Newkirk. Two hits. 13-9. Big innings to end the story. Seven runs for the Aggies in the first. Eight runs for the Longhorns in the fourth. Just defended the plate. You know, that's the secret of a good hitter, too. A good hitter will be able to at least make enough contact and just enough contact to foul off the pitches he doesn't want to try to work with. The bad hitter will either miss them entirely and strike out or he'll hit them fair and they'll get him out because he's not hitting them solid. He could just flip the bat out. And he did the same thing. He fought off an inside pitch. One ball and two strikes. Here comes our, what, fourth train or fifth Fourth train, train fourth or fifth, yeah. The reason the horn is on uh, all the way down in the background is because of these people so close to the tracks. They don't want to squash anybody. He's not trying to attract attention here. New Kirk again just gets a piece of the ball and fouls it out of play. Steve Buffet is on deck. John Prather to follow. Nobody out. Runner at second. Top of the eighth. The Yankees have two more chances. They'll have the bottom of the batting order with the bottom two hitters and the top. Again, they're playing without Chuck Knobloch, who was tossed. They're arguing a play in the sixth. Byington. Down. He was tossed for arguing a play that uh, turns out he was right on because the home plate umpire uh, apparently requested to uh, make a ruling, uh, and he said that Chuck was right, but it was too late. He'd already been thrown out of the ballgame. Here's Steve Bethay. Steve has not been hitting as well as last year. He had 295 last year. This year came into this game hitting 258, and he's one for four. The train is virtually stopped. stopped yeah. Maybe he wants to watch a couple of innings. Yeah, that or he is concerned. The people are too close, but uh, they've been out there. It's going to go real slow. There's a base hit up the middle, and David Collison is going to carry the mail. He'll score it. Thompson tried to come up firing, but uh, couldn't get it 
done, but it'll still be an RBI in the air. Base hit for the Bay. And the first run off Dela Cruz. It is 14 to 9. I guess next we check to see what the most run, well obviously it's the most runs against the Yankees this year, they've only lost twice. Uh, Pan American scored 11 on them, however, 10 rather, on them in the second game of the year. The Aggies, uh, after an interesting first game, winning 20-7, to played Pan American in the next game and had to hold on to an 11-10 to win. So it depends on who's pitching. Texas, meanwhile, has scored 20 or more point, uh, points, runs four times, and uh, have also scored uh, 18 runs against Texas Arlington and 16 against Arkansas. So their high has been 22 runs. You know, the a record is truly amazing, 40 and 2. It really matters little who you're playing, and yes, that's the train making all that noise. It matters little who you're playing. If you're 40 and 2, you just have to have a solid ball club because even the, the schools that aren't highly regarded or highly rated, many of them will have at least one pitcher that can cause you some problems. I'm going to quit talking until the train leaves. be a new driver on the road. <laughs> Either that or he's a Longhorn fan and he heard the score. 14-9. <laughs> Thank you. I guess he got past the danger area. He's passed all the people down. He's going to speed up. single, the second hit of the game. Longhorns have 13 hits to go with their 14 runs. Ryder missed, and it's just away. Just look at that last pitch. A little outside. Albright tried to bring it back in, but the umpire wasn't buying it. One ball and two strikes. Got it. That's two away. It's three strikeouts in a row of Prather and third strikeout for Dana Cruz. Two down now with Lance Jones due up. Jones has had two hits. He's also struck out twice and reached on an error. Lance Jones uh, is from Portland, Oregon. Transfer from Columbia Basin Junior College. Check that. That's Long Jones. He's from Corpus Christi. <laughs> In Alvin Community College. Chris Gaskill's in front of the Texas dugout, just taking some loose throws. It's been a long time, even though uh, Texas hasn't scored a lot of runs this inning, but it's been a while since he's been on the mound, so he's just kind of loosening up. And he's doing just what you always want the pitcher to do in a game that's heading into three and a half hours. Take his time. <laughs> one ball and one strike. <laughs> There's Gaskill. Gaskill needs to throw now. It's been a long half inning. He wants to keep his arm loose, and De La Cruz is taking a lot of time. One ball and two strikes, two outs, runner at first, 14 to 9. Texas leads it. They won the opening game of the series last night, 6 to 2, behind Kirk Dressendorfer's pitching and the grand slam home run by Craig Newkirk. Newkirk added a solo homer today. And there's a perfect bunt if it stays fair and it won't. 
the big ear. Bunning with two strikes, he's out. So in the eighth inning, one run, two hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Yankees have six outs to get a bunch of runs. Travis Williams, Jim Newman, and Kirk Thompson do up. It is 14-9 to nine, Texas on each end. Longhorns and the Aggies from Olsen Field and College Station. We have reached the bottom of the eighth with a 14-9 Texas lead. Travis Williams, Jim Newman, and Kirk Thompson. And other than the two-run homer by Terry Taylor in the sixth, the Aggies have not hit the ball since the first inning. The baseball for pitching is a game of control, and unofficially, Texas pitchers have thrown 101 pitches, while the Aggie pitchers have had to throw 180. That's a huge difference. That is also why we have a game that is going to go three and a half hours. That pitch is low, and it is one ball and one strike. In the last, uh, well, really since the fourth, fifth, and seventh innings, the Aggies have been retired rather easily. One ball and two strikes. In the first inning, you may recall, if you can remember that far ago, uh, that Texas actually went out swinging. They, they came up swinging the bat. Uh, Jones led off with a single, and then Lowry hit him with a double play. Bright was hit by a pitch. Butcher hit about the first pitch, and that was it. No swing. Nice scramble, though, by Prater. So all we need now is reflection on the car's windshield right in the eyes. Is that in your eyes, too? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a nice post here that I can kind of reflect it with. Oh, good. Two balls and two strikes. Got him on the breaker on the inside part of the plate. Williams is a strikeout victim. Gaskill second. Aggie pitchers have struck out more hitters, but they've also walked and hit more. Here's Jim Newman. Newman double drove in a run in the first. He's only hit one for three. He's from Dallas. Bishop Lynch High School takes it low for a ball. Brother Jack uh, Newman is a mini-tour pro golfer. His brother-in-law is Danny Heap. Remember Danny Heap with the Astros and the Dodgers? One ball and one strike. Jim Newman probably also knows something about those Taiwan guys. He played the Little League World Series. Here's a strike. One ball and two strikes. Gaskill doing a good job of mixing it up, throwing some fastballs with small speed pitches, and as we talked about way back in the early part of the ball game, he's doing what a lot of the pitchers today have not. He's kept the ball low. The one-two bounced on the ground. If they had short, two quick outs. The Yankees down to four outs and one more in this half inning. Kirk Thompson, who Texas has not been able to keep off the bases. That's what you want to read off, man. He's doubled, single, single, and walked. Scored twice. He was on when uh, Taylor hit his two-run homer. No balls and two strikes. Or no, no, I should say no uh, count and two outs. Now there's a ball, one ball and no strikes. Who continues to blow out towards center. Nice steady breeze. One ball and one strike. For the three home runs hit. The first one, the grand slam by Collison, was not really aided enough to make it go over the wall. Newkirk's probably was wind aided. And nothing helped Taylor's. He didn't need any help. This was a line drive. Two balls and one strike. Tip into the glove, two and two. Unless the Yankees rally, what this is going to do, of course, in the Southwest Conference is it's just going to 
It's going to knot up Texas and Texas A&M in second place, but they're going to be a pile behind Arkansas. And they both are going to have to do some damage, and they'll have a chance because they both still have their series with Arkansas. Three balls and two strikes. Just missed, and Thompson is on again. Well, he's doing his bit offensively, getting on base. Now Taylor steps in. Last time, he hit a two-run homer. He has two hits, three RBI. So they won 20 of their last 21 games. There are three series left are with Rice and then Texas and Texas A&M. Well, with Texas and Texas A&M, ones are going to be tough. Of course, Texas knows that uh, Rice can throw Mr. Howard at you. Yes. He can cause some problems in at least one of those three games. He had back-to-back -back shutouts, including one against Texas. No balls and a strike. That's kind of the point I was making earlier about some of these non-conference teams. Most of them will have at least one guy who's capable of beating you. And unless you hold the other team down in check, you're going to lose some games in those uh, non-conference games, even against teams that aren't ranked. But A&M has been able to stay away from that all year. Their only losses to Texas and Oklahoma State. No balls and two strikes. In the meantime, they've beaten such teams as the you know, perennial College World Series representatives, the main Black Bears. They scored 20 runs on them. And he misses. Texas travels to Arkansas for that three-game series. They'll have to play in Fayetteville. That will be next weekend. And the following weekend, Arkansas, 5th and 6th of May, will be here to play a Got to make one correction there. Nice block by Prater. They did not score 20 on Maine. They scored 16. 50, 50, 50. <laughs> 16 to 4. They scored uh, 21 on Nebraska. 27 on Texas Tech. 20 on Pan America. Two two. Three two. Well you uh, watch Taylor get on base and you're getting close to Byington, although Jason Marshall would be the next hitter. Loss of Knoblock would look pretty big at that point. There goes the runner and three two and two outs. He just pops in on the second straight walk. Jason Marshall was called out on strikes. He was the first batter that uh, Gaskill faced in the sixth. He just overpowered him. Marshall, however, was an outstanding high school hitter and actually has a very fine average in limited play this year at over 400. hits and 24 at-bats updated with eight RBIs in his 24 at-bats. No homers. Now his job is to get on base. If Marshall gets on base, you bring Bynes into the plate with the tying, or with, well, it would have been the tying. That's right, they added a run last inning. Well, almost with the tying run. <laughs> it's 14 to 9. But at the top of the inning, Texas scores. And it's 2-0. Now, Texas, this is because Bill Bethay just stepped out and moved the outfielders just slightly in and more toward right. Of course, Jason Marshall is not particularly known to the outfielders because he is a substitute. So, the scattering court uh, made Coach Bethay move the outfielders just a little bit. Brian Dare hustling down to the bullpen for Texas. Strike court. There's a left-hander, and he 
Lee has been up at least once before today. Two balls and a strike. On the fifth, back into the crowd. Just above our high home camera. High first camera. Two balls and two strikes, two outs. It is 14-9, Texas over Texas A&M. But the Aggies with a bit of a threat here in the bottom of the eighth. Two runners off. Jason Marshall wants to get on to load the table for Byington. Can't do it. Big strikeout of the slider for Gaskill, and so in the eighth, no runs, no hits, two walks, and two men left on base. Let's go to the... Well, for those of you that went out and washed the dog and mowed the yard and did your shopping, we're still here. It's 14-9, to 9, Texas over Texas A&M as we go to the top of the night. Put Gustafson's team on the verge of making it seven straight wins over the Aggies. And two straight this year. We've got to get three outs at the bottom of the ninth. First, they'll get the hit and see if they can add to it. David Lowry, Scott Bryan, and Arthur Butcher. And the first pitch is away. Anthony De La Cruz, he came on in the sixth. He was the fourth pitcher for Texas A&M. Ron Allen started one four and a third, gave up three runs, two earned. He left, the club was ahead. But not for long after that. Gilbert walked two, got no one out. Steve Hughes got racked for five hits and five runs, three of them earned. And it all adds up to a 14 to nine score. There's a strike. Two balls and a strike. Sold just about all the tickets here this uh, this game. Uh, there were some no-shows uh, among the season ticket holders, but a lot of people outside the ballpark have been watching. And it stuck with it, even though most of them are Aggie fans, and it does not look good. We got uh, action in the bullpen. I think it's Dressendorf that's down throwing. Can't see his number from here. It is. Dressendorfer, uh, as Cliff Gustafson told us, maybe a hitter or two. Hate to second guess the coach, but it is 14 to 9. I think that he might be throwing very hard right now. There's a bouncing ball up the middle. Base hit for David Lowry. That's 14 hits. And Lowry's second. He just takes the pitch right back up the middle. Pitch was a little bit away. Chopped it on the ground. And that ball was uh, just like you'd see on the artificial turf, except it wouldn't have hit the turf in either case. The first bounce was in the dirt. This big bounce uh, out over second base was in the dirt. Here's Bryant, one of the few Longhorns that has not hit today. They've, they've kept the ball in on him so much so they've hit him twice. He has struck out into a double play and walked once. Been on base three times. Slider away, and it is one ball and no strikes. Marshall and Taylor up the middle playing for the double play. Knobloch was tossed out of the game back in the sixth inning after arguing a call at second base, which replay showed he was right, and in fact, the original call was overruled, but by then, Knobloch had already been thrown out. One ball and one strike. Bryant came into this day hitting 363. He's just over two, but he has not had a hit. Does have an RBI, walking with the bases loaded. That's 76 for the year, tops in college baseball. Runner at first base, Scott Bryant, the hitter. Breaking ball makes it one ball and two strikes. Last week, Bryant had a, a super game that we had on home sports entertainment. In the first game of the doubleheader on Saturday, he had a two-run double, a single that drove in a run, and an RBI triple. Texas beat Tech 13 to three. This time he fans for the second time. Five strikeouts for Dela Cruz. And he'll bring up Arthur Butcher. Take a look at it again. This one he kept away with a slider. Or a cut back.
fastball, and that is nine strikeouts by Aggie pitchers, but that's a small consolation. Arthur Butcher has had a big game as the runner has the base stolen. Didn't pay much attention to Lowry, and he just took it. So Lowry uh, adds to his total his 21st stolen base in 29 attempts. Arthur Butcher has two hits in three official at-bats. Hit into a fielder's choice to end the first inning. Then in the third, he doubled, drove in a run, walked with the bases loaded to drive in a run in the fourth, singled and stole a base in the sixth, later scored, and walked in the seventh. Grand slam home run a week ago, so we've been on a pretty hot bat. Pitch is away. In fact, we'll see uh, just what Butcher did uh, with himself in a week. He raised his average from 301 to 317 coming into this game, and he's raised it a little bit more. Two balls and no strikes. Three and all. Again, these two teams come right back at it at 7 o'clock tonight. Final game of the series. The Aggies have used a lot of pitchers. Texas has used three, maybe four, depending on how Gaskill is able to finish things off. Strike. Gaskill is a closing type pitcher. That's how he's been used. And he, he came in a little early. He came in in the sixth and has gone two and two-thirds. So we'll see whether Cliff Gustafson actually uses Dressendorfer. Meanwhile, De La Cruz is uh, working on his fourth inning. And he may be showing it. Butcher with yet another walk. Third walk by De La Cruz. That is eight walks, four hit bats. Danny Toledo, the first baseman. He last time up, a very unusual play. He's, he's one for three on the game. Last time up, he popped up with the bases loaded. And uh, out on the infield. It was ruled an infield fly. The catcher, however, did not was not able to catch it. Albright tried. Meanwhile, the runner at first base got confused. That was Butcher. And he uh, drew a throw because the other pushed off their bases. Lowry, who was at third, had to try to score, and they tossed him out two to three to five. It ended up being a double play on an infield fly. Don't see that often. No balls and a strike. Runners at second and first. And the pitch is away. We've got one out. And De La Cruz is throwing too many pitches now. 1-1. One out, the runner at second base is Lowry, the runner at first is Butcher. Marshall and Taylor up the middle looking for a bouncer that they can end the inning with. Meanwhile, the Yankees trying to plot a five or six run ninth if they can. Cliff Gustafson not going to allow that. He's got Dressendorfer just keeping his arm loose in the bullpen. Slider in the dirt, blocked by Albright. Catchers have earned their money today. Both have been all over the place. Albright, the senior from California. Redshirted last year, lettered in 87. Two balls and a strike with one out. Three balls and a strike. It has been a marathon. Fourteen to nine. It started at one o'clock. And we still need five outs. There's a strike. Three balls and two strikes. Aggie backers want to get about five runs before they have all those outs. I think just as soon as we don't use them all, they'd be happy 
happy to get five runs before anybody is out of the ninth and win the game. They take five to tie, though. Maybe more. David Cruz can't retire the next couple of hitters. Coming up tonight at 7 o'clock, and the way this is going, it may be right after this game is over. It'll be tennis from uh, the American Capital Invitational at River Oaks. There go the runners, fouled back, and it's three balls and two strikes. One out. Eddie Toledo. Eddie had an illness that kept him out of the final fall action, but in just 45 at-bats, hit only 222. Last year he had a two-run double versus Jim Abbott in Michigan. That was one of his big hits last year. 222 was his average last year. Had leg problems, but he's been a regular this season. Paid off with a three. They got the runner caught. And they tag him out. They tag Lowry out as he gets picked off. Going into second base is Butcher. And it goes with a pickoff. Taking a look at it again. They were going to run uh, maybe the double steal again. And, and Lowry just... Took off too soon. Taylor to Byington. One, five, four. Pitcher to second baseman to third baseman for the out. Now he's got three balls and two strikes and two outs and a runner at second base. Eddie Toledo, the hitter. Foul back. Toledo is a Boulder, Colorado native catch as well as play first base. In fact, he was catching last weekend. The situation, all that's missing is the score. It's 14 to 9, Texas. Fly foul ball again. That's the other thing we've done tonight. We've done it today. We've gone through a lot of baseball. game, of course, being telecast on Home Sports Entertainment, being picked up by the Sunshine Network in Florida and radioed by both of the respective schools, Texas and Texas A&M. Bill Little, who will be with us at the Arkansas series, is working that. There's a high pop-up in a short left center field. The shortstop wants the ball and takes it. Marshall makes the play, and that retires the side. Well, it's the Aggies' last chance. Bottom of the ninth. Bynes and Albright do. They trail by five. We'll be back in a moment. 14, AM 9. Last chance for the Aggies. By the way, we'd like to thank Sports Information Director Alan Cannon and the entire athletic department here at Texas A&M University for their help in preparing for this telecast. Also thanks to Texas SID Bill Little and his staff and for his support this week. We couldn't have done it without any of these fellows. We also want to thank... Steve Ross for jumping in the chair next to us uh, at a moment's notice when we had some scheduling changes as a result of the rain. Steve doing a fine job. And we get set here for the bottom of the ninth. John Blank and Eric Albright, Andy Duke, Gaskill will have a chance to, uh, to actually get a save. He will have pitched long enough despite the margin in the game if he can get through this inning and finish the game. Byington with a two-run double is only hit. Two balls and a strike. Gaskell from Houston Westfield. Misses with the breaking ball. Six feet, 185 pounds is is uh, Gaskell. Byington, of course, is a power pack. 5'8", 165. 3-1 pitch. Foul ball. Three balls and two strikes. Facial resemblance as we take a look at the Aggie version of the rally cap. A little facial resemblance to uh, the right-handed Greg 
Swindell back in his Texas days. Breaking ball on one hop, Matador off of Bethay. And Byington is off. Has not yet made a ruling on that. That ball was hit very hard, and it was a between hopper. As you take a look at it, it really handcuffed the day. Bottom line is that Brian is on base. Right. It'll be a base hit, I believe. You didn't see it flash up. That would have been my call, so we'll see if that adds up right. They've got 10 hits on the board. We'll double check that. And it is a base hit. Here's Eric Albright. Out of the, uh, the ten hits, though, seven came in the first inning. And since then, the hits have been few and far between for eight and Albright had one of them that wasn't in the first. He grounded out in the first, got a single in the second. That's his only hit. That hit, by the way, was also only the first given up by Gaston. Breaking ball down. It is two balls and a strike. At the moment, the line totals, uh, or the totals read 14, 14, and 2 for Texas with 10 left on base. A&M, 9 runs, 10 hits, 4 errors. They have been a factor. The one left 5 on base. Breaking ball for a strike. They have not gotten as many on since that first inning. Chris Gaskell working in his, he's in his fourth inning. He pitched two-thirds of the sixth, and he's been on ever since. Bouncing ball to third. Newkirk goes to second for what? Wow, nobody's out. Lowry tried to get rid of the ball too quickly, and that was a fundamental mistake when you're leading by five. you got to get the outs one at a time. Here's the play again. It would have been real tough to turn to. Lowry wanted to speed it up. The ball was not hit that hard. What you're seeing now is the door being opened for Texas A&M. And this is a good enough baseball team that if you open that door a crack, they will blow it all the way off the hitches. Andy Duke will be the hitter. Texas has Dare going in the bullpen again. After Duke is Mike Easley, who is a left-handed hitter, so this could be a hitter that uh, Gaskell will face. You don't get him out for sure. There's a strike.
place him on the bases, you send the tying run to the plate. Strike two. The old lefty-righty combo so far is not working in Easley's advantage. No balls and two strikes. Bouncing ball. Up the middle. Off of Lowry. One run will score. Two runs will score. And runners will be on the corner. That's a base hit. That was very similar to the hit by Bynes, and it was one of those handcuff jobs hit right on the nose. And can the Aggies do it? They're trying. Two RBIs for Easley. Take a look at it. It was hit very hard. And it, it, it looked like it actually came back on Lowry. He almost overran it. Lowry has had an error and a tough chance, but they has had a tough chance. The Yankees trying to turn the tables on the Longhorns who've been taking advantage of these uh, misplays. And Travis Williams comes up, and he is the tying run. Nobody out. Williams is due for a hit. He's hitless. Ball for a ball, one ball, and no strikes. Williams is 0 for 4. He's hit six home runs this year. Breaking ball. Oh, got the inside part of the play. Looked like it hung in, but it caught the corner. Well, Williams, the Austinite. Big things now against his neighborhood team as that curveball caught the corner and it's one ball and one strike. Missed outside. Williams has been a winner. He was on the Mustang World Series champs in 1980. That's for 10 and 11-year-olds. Was MVP of the Aggie Invitational this year, filling in for the injured John Vines and had a big bat in that one. He's ahead on the count. Three balls and a strike. The Aggies do not have a power hitter due up for a couple of hitters after Williams. Newman is up next, and he's got just two home runs. And Kirk Thompson has not hit any, but Thompson has been on base every time. Three balls and a strike. Nobody out. 14 to 11. Well, we kind of thought the Aggies would reach double figures, and both teams had. It's been a long one, but it's certainly going down to the wire. Foul back into the crowd savagely. Woo. Still three balls and two strikes. The Aggies have rallied from behind on numerous occasions this season, particularly early in the year when they put their winning streak together. Those rally camps have worked in the past. The 3 2 pitch. Got him on an off speed breaking ball. One down. Big strikeout for Gaskell. And it'll bring up Jim Newman. Still activity down in the uh, Texas bullpen. Now, is Cliff Gustafson going to come out and try to do something? He's coming out to the mound. Sort of an interesting uh, decision if you would make a change right after striking out Williams, the uh, right-handed batter, because he's facing another right-handed batter. That's who's up next in Newman. He has not made a call to the bullpen, however.
Texas. We have one out as Cliff Gustafson leaves the mound after discussing things. Of course, uh, Texas now can close this out with a double play, a snappy twin killing. Jim Newman can with a snappy long ball. Take your pick, depending on who you're rooting for. Breaking ball in the dirt, blocked by Prather. One ball and no strikes. Travis is dead in the middle of the game, has come to life. Ball two. This is probably the last player that uh, Gaskill will pitch to because Thompson is due up next. He's a left-handed hitter. They've not gotten him off base yet. Taylor would follow. He's a left-handed hitter. They got the left-hander loose. So the only way really that Gaskell finishes the game is if he induces Newman to hit a double play. Newman is not going to be swinging, at least on the next pitch and maybe for the next two. Three balls, no strikes. Strike. Now the check. Newman takes a look down at Mark Johnson, his head coach, to see if he's turned loose here. If Newman were a little bit more of a power hitter, you might expect it. I'm not so sure. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Ball four. They're loaded. And the potential winning run comes to the plate. Meanwhile, Cliff Gustafson will cross the white line. And as the song says, hey, hey, goodbye will be the story for Gaskell, but Gaskell did a fine job in relief. He pitched three full innings. He allowed just two runs, and uh, he'll be replaced by the left-hander who's been loosening up for some time. This is Brian Dare. Dare's numbers, he has won two, lost one, with a 3.82 earned run average. This will be his 11th game. He has one start, 35 in the third innings, 31 hits. An outstanding strikeout pitch, 38 strikeouts and only six walks, so he is not likely going to induce uh, more ulcers or any ulcers for Cliff Gustafson as far as walking people. He has allowed two home runs, and that's something the Aggies are good at. There dares numbers on the board. As far as him as a uh, little background on Brian, he beat the Aggies in the Southwest Conference Tournament last year, allowing just three earned runs in seven and a third innings. All overall for the year, he was one and two. He did not pitch a lot last year. He was uh, fairly low on the rotation or on the pitching lineup, but got in on that uh, tournament game, did a great job. He has good control. Red-shirted prior to 87 after a 15 and one high school senior year at Austin Westlake. He was the hard luck loser in the last Longhorn game of 88 in the tournament lost to California, giving up just three runs in six and a third innings. He's 5'9", 170 pounds, left-handed. And Kirk Thompson, who is also left-handed, but as a hitter, will be the man to face it. I want to welcome the folks in Dallas. We've been here since 1 o'clock, folks, and it's 14th for 11, Texas leading Texas A&M. We're in the bottom of the ninth with one out. The base is loaded, and what represents the winning run at the plate in Kirk Thompson. I'm Greg Lucas. Steve Ross has been alongside. He's down on the field to talk to the post-game celebrators, whoever that may be. Andy Duke is at third, Easley is at second, Newman is at first. Ryan Dare has just come in in relief, and this will be the first battery faces. And it's ball one. So 
that's the situation right now. Texas is possibly going to win the first two games of the series against A&M, but the Aggies are threatening with one out in the last of the ninth for the bases loaded. Back to Dallas. What a place to leave Dallas. <laughs> Four folks up there with the bases loaded. Of course, they're going into overtime in their NBA game between the Houston Rockets and the Mavericks, so they've got some excitement as well. Two balls and no strikes. We'll make sure they get the word whatever happens. the 2-0 pitch. Strike. Now Thompson has a great eye. He's walked twice in this game after three hits his first time to the plate. He's a leadoff man. He does what you got to do as a leadoff man. Ron 28 walks this year coming in. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Bouncing ball. Through. Well on the score. An infield base hit. the glove of Mooker. It is 14 to 12 with the tying run. Now at second base. And Terry Taylor who leads the club in home runs at the plate. Let's take a look at it. It was wide of the bag. A good attempt by Mooker to deflect it. But Thay was trying to gauge it with the backhand to at least get the force. But because it was deflected he had really no good chance at it. Just got the tip of the glove on the ball. And now Taylor, who hit his 14th home run in the sixth, is up with the bases loaded. Bouncing ball up the middle, base hit. Here comes one run. Here comes the tying run. We're tied at 14. with the potential winning run or the winning run is Kirk Thompson. Taylor is at first. There is one out. And Jason Marshall, who entered the game in the sixth inning after Knobloch was thrown out, has a chance to be a hero. The ball just had eyes, and that's the way the Yankees have played all year. The throw had no chance. And now you got to be real careful if you're Texas because Jason Marshall with one out with a speedy runner at third could try to squeeze in the winning run. Meanwhile, the left-hander, Dare, failed to get out either of the left-handed hitters. Sometimes the strategy just doesn't work. Gustafson to the mound. And I'm not sure if he is going to make a switch if Gressendorf uh, is coming in. He went into the dugout. And Gressendorfer will come in, I believe. He is in front of the dugout, standing, waiting to get the call, and he has not gotten it. So he will not come. Well, let's see. He's not coming in. He thought he was coming in. He was headed toward the mound. But Cliff Gustafson did not make the call. And it will be Marshall Bressendorfer, number 10, winner last night. Cliff said if he needed an out. But see, he needs more than that because we're tied at 14. And the worst that the Aggies get out of this is extra innings. And the best the Longhorns get out of this is extra innings. The game has passed four hours long. Here's Marshall. The infield in. Low ball on. The infield is in because the runner at third is the winning run. They are not concerned about the runner at first, although at this point, Taylor is playing it safe. Only one out. What a spot for the freshman, Jason Marshall. One ball and no strikes. Throw 
to first, tried to pick him off, almost threw it away, and the runner down at third was bluffing to the plate, Thompson. Oh. Well, sometimes they say that he who waits has the best of all worlds, and we certainly are having a thrilling finish. One ball and no strikes. Runners on the corners, tied at 14. Pitch out, no go. They were afraid, Texas, that the Aggies had a playoff. It's two balls and no strikes. Now, falling behind on the count here is not crucial because it's the winning run at third, and even if he pitches around Marshall and walks him, that actually sets up a force play at the plate with the bases loaded, and that's sometimes a little easier than the tag. Another pitch out. They're just going to give the runner first base. They wanted to be sure there was nothing going play-wise. That's why they've not intentionally walked. But it's three balls and no strikes, and they may just be very careful with this pitch. I was thinking they may go ahead and motion him to the first base bag, but they're going to pitch on 3-0. and all. There will be no swing here. Again, they make the toss to first. That is risky. If that ball gets away, it's over. Remember, there's another one tonight starting at 7. Those of you with access to ESPN can catch it. And it is ball four. The bases are loaded. Nine players have batted in the ninth. And John Byington, who leads the league in hitting, is the hitter. 448, he's number two in the nation. That's why managers make out lineups. To get the best hitters up in the right situation. Now the only double play that the Longhorns can go for is home plate to first. They are playing so tight, any ball hit anywhere else, they cannot even think about it. Of course, that's the only way you can go. You've got to go to the plate. That's the winning run. He has to be retired. Can't take any chances. Now quick Gustafson to the mound, and we're going to see Dressendorf. Oh boy, there's all the stops have been made here. Dressendorfer has pitched relief uh, most recently two weeks ago and really was not that effective. He got out of it, but uh, compared to the way he had pitched the night before, he was not that effective. And we will see what happens here. Cliff Gustafson wants him to get either out of this or end it the other way. He won't pitch into the next inning. I think you're pretty certain. There's his numbers. 11 and 1, 10 complete games. 114 strikeouts in 103 innings. And of course, he's going for the strikeout here with Byington. First and foremost, he would accept the bouncing ball right at one of the fielders for the force to first double play but he can go either way Dressendorfer out of Dressendorfer's appearances he's only had the one relief appearance and that was uh, two weeks ago he survived it but as I said before he had some problems Dressendorfer was given up the most home runs on the team five but of course that will figure because he's also pitched the most innings almost twice as many as the Number two pitcher, Shane Reynolds. Here's Big John. John Byington from Baytown Lee High School against Kirk Dressendorfer of Pearland. You think they probably had some hookups along the line. Byington is a junior and Dressendorf for the sophomore. Now we're going to have a defensive change in left. This will be Schultz. I believe going in for left field. Uh, that's Jeff Schultz. And he replaces Butcher. He's got the better arm of the two. And of course the infield and the outfield all will be very shallow. What a tremendous game this has turned out to be. The Aggies saving it for the first and the last. They scored five in the first, or seven in the first. They have scored five here in the ninth.
wonder if that means those middle innings Aggie fans could have mowed their grass. Because <laughs> those were the Longhorn innings. Eight runs in the fourth for Texas. Base is loaded. Vines in the hitter. Dressendorfer's pinch. There's a long drive. It's over. The ball will fall out of here. A grand slam. about it. He struggled, and uh, uh, but when he had to, he came on, and uh, he didn't lose his composure. He could have given in, and he didn't give in, and so I was real pleased with his efforts. Let's talk to the man of the hour here, John Vines, who had a, had a two-run RBI double in, in the first inning, and then that grand slam home run. Uh, you packed quite a wall for a guy your size. Well, uh, you know, it's just, you know, Coach Johnson, you know, works with our head pretty hard, and, you know, we hit the weight room pretty hard, so, uh, you know, baseball is a sport where you don't have to have a lot of size like football, basketball to, to have success in. I don't know the fans could think of anything better than the conference's best pitcher supposedly going against the conference's top hitter. What did he throw you? That was just a fastball, you know, he, their, their outfield was drawn in, uh, he had to come in there, he had no room to put me on base, you know, the base is loaded, so he, he got on the inside corner, and I was, I was kind of looking for it, he, he was pitching me like that last night, too. Coach, this has to be a great momentum builder for tonight's uh, game uh, just in a couple of hours. This has to be a great morale builder. I would hope so. <laughs> I don't know what else we could have done. Uh, we needed to win desperately, and uh, this puts us even up. we got a rubber match tonight, but uh, the, the win today is uh, a great boost for us. An incredible comeback, an incredible win. Back to Greg Lucas. Thanks a lot, Steve Ross. Those of you in Dallas that have just joined us following the overtime game between the Mavericks and the Rockets, when we left you, the bases were loaded, uh, and uh, Garrett Kirk Thompson was up. Before it was all over, nine runs scored. A grand slam home run by John Byington, breaking a 14-14 tie. He only needed a fly ball, and he flied it all the way out over the wall, and it ended 18-14. The Aggies now even the series. They go 41-2. and two. Texas now 37-11. They'll play all again tonight at 7 o'clock. That game can be yours on ESPN. There are the final totals. Texas A&M, 18 runs, 14 hits, uh, 15 runs, uh, 15 hits rather, and four errors. They left only five on base. Texas, 14 runs, 14 hits, three errors, 10 left on base. Dela Cruz uh, got the win. Dressendorfer, uh, the loser, and Byington with the grave winning RBI. So long, Dallas. Thanks for being with us. And meanwhile, the situation here, it's just about all over the final score. Home Sports Entertainment. The executive producer is Jack Stanfield. And today's telecast was produced by Murphy Brown and directed by Chip Sago. Our technical director, Bill Rogers, and engineer in charge, Phil Wren. 
Don't forget to join us Saturday, April 29th for Southwest Conference Baseball Doubleheader Action as the Arkansas Razorbacks host the Aggies of Texas A&M. Once again, today's final score, it was A&M 18, Texas 14. For Steve Ross, I'm Greg Lucas saying so long from College Station. This has been an exclusive presentation of Home Sports Entertainment.